as always, Brandon with the countdown into Ooh. our the games have begun into our episode thirteen. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is now we're we're past the point of it being new, so we're just kind of sinking right. into mediocrity at this point. Yeah. If you've listened to us this far, you know what to expect. So. <laughs> I don't know what's yeah. wrong with you that you're still listening to us or maybe what's right with you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's probably some like trajectory where it's or just some constant of nature where things like, you know, you get like the really big high at the beginning and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got all these fresh ideas. And then at a certain point, you're just kind of like, this is just what we do. You got anything? Sure. You got anything? Sure. <laughs> and, but, uh, I think the challenge is... Uh, Think of the most mundane things to be inspiring. I'm, I was That's inspired true. by my glass of water this morning <laughs> that I drank when I got out of bed because <laughs> it hydrated me. <laughs> That's not my real thing. <laughs> no? Okay. I was about uh, to go on a deep dive with you. No, no. We'll riff, we'll riff off of water maybe another time. I was thinking yeah. about that one, but I have a different one for today. Is it low expectations? Because then everything's inspiring. Low expectations <laughs> is inspiring. Yeah. Just <laughs> FYI to the audience. <laughs> yeah. If you set the bar low uh, enough, yeah. you'll always be inspired. You can just end it there, I think. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh let's let's start with your thing again then, since mine is either whales or oh. um 3D modeling. So Okay. Oh, Pulp very cool. inspiring. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, well, my thing for uh, this week that I was really thinking about as inspiring is your senses. You know, your taste, touch, sight, sound, smell. And I was just, I was thinking about how, you know, it's pretty amazing to have all five of those. and Or six, depending I, who you ask. Possibly six. You know, you could <laughs> maybe say like your your balance or equilibrium or... You know, sometimes people think there's like your intuition or, you know, some different things, your senses, mm -hmm. but, or seeing dead people or whatever, you know, but yeah, <laughs> you know, there's, there's so much that we interact with in our life based off of our senses. And I was just thinking about how it's crazy. You know, some people are deaf, some people are blind. Um, sometimes people have numbness and they can't feel things as well. With COVID recently, a lot of people were losing their smell and their taste, you know, yeah. when people were living their life. And, and I just think, man, how crazy would it be if like, just as human beings, the human body didn't have one of those senses, like for everybody, <laughs> you know, mm. like what if all of humanity could not taste food and it just was all the same. It was like, oh, well, I don't know the difference between tasting oatmeal and <laughs> ice cream and chicken you know i mean what what if you just nobody nobody knew like i don't know this is like a meat thing and who knows what the difference is between tri-tip and brisket it's all kind of the same you know you just ate you wouldn't stuff. Have a fast food industry we yeah i mean ha think about how the world would be different you know mm -hmm. there wouldn't be like all these restaurants and things like food would be probably 100 percent practical like there really wouldn't be anything you well, know it'd fancy be, it'd almost about be like food. being blind where like when one sense is gone, your others are enhanced. So you might actually feel like the energy that a food gives your body like more readily. Yeah, that's and an interesting like, point too. You'd be able to pick up on that since you're not like worried about the taste. Yeah. You'd be like, how does this food make me feel? Is my stomach upset after I eat it? Is it, you know, because like I think a lot of times you'll ignore those signals in favor of the taste or whatever, you know, that's satisfying in your body. So yeah. that's true. Yeah. Like in, you know, Thanksgiving just happened and it's easy to just eat tons of food and then you find yourself totally full, like a roly poly. And you're thinking, <laughs> oh man, why did I eat so much food? Like as you're, you know, still eating more food probably. And, <laughs> um, down with pie. <laughs> yeah. Where's, uh, where's the guy, what's his name? Jim Gaffigan. Where's Jim Gaffigan when we need him? <laughs> Is this guy? Just eating more pie? <laughs> um, but, you know, you stuff one. yourself. Yeah, it's like if you if you didn't have taste, maybe you would pick up on more of those internal signals. Uh, I think I'm full right now. Like, I don't need to eat another bite. Anybody have mm -hmm. room for dessert? No, I don't, actually. I don't care about <laughs> dessert. <laughs> you know? It's not like a social obligation. <laughs> yeah, you know. 
It wouldn't be, nobody would be asking like, okay, guys, here's dinner. How is it? Does everybody like it? It'd be like, no, we don't. There's no, there's nothing to like. <laughs> like I'm just eating it. It's perfectly <laughs> adequate. <laughs> this is appropriate for my bodily physiological <laughs> needs. <laughs> That's the nutrient cube. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. The drop of dew. Yeah. Uh, just put yeah. it into an IV drip into my body. Kind of, yeah. It is kind of um, crazy. Side tangent, how long you can survive on IV. That is a yeah. weird thing. <laughs> yeah, that is a weird thing. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Which which sense would you want? If you chose everybody to not have one sense, which one would you pick? Okay, yeah. See, okay. So that's an interesting thought. You know, would it be touch? Would it be smell, taste? I, and keep in mind I, you're choosing for seven point or I, whatever eight billion I'm choosing other people. for all humanity. I know if if I could just rewrite history and nobody ever had a sense of something, sense I, of I, justice. Honestly, I think I would say smell. Yeah, you know, even though there are some really important functions with smell, like if you need to smell like smoke for a fire or monoxide or something mm -hmm. happening, but. Honestly, I think I would say smell just because if you could still maybe taste the food when you eat it, like you, that would be good. It'd be kind of a bummer to not be able to smell it because it is nice to smell good food and you wouldn't know it was wine, a bummer. and you wouldn't really know it was a bummer. Yeah, you wouldn't be bummed out, no. but you also wouldn't smell all the bad smells. So if you had a dirty job, like cleaning the sewers or people farting or whatever, you know, you'd never <laughs> smell that. So you'd never smell people's bo. No, there'd be no such thing as scented candles, longer. you know, I don't know. I, I almost wonder if we had a society without smell, if there would maybe be some good things about that. I don't know. Yeah. There seems to be some people that are more like smell tolerant or something. I don't know. Like, yeah. Like some people just clean porta potties like it's no big deal. Yeah. I'm like, what kind of superhero are you? Like, what kind of powers do you have? But, uh, yeah. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, what would probably... you pick? Probably just everyone would be blind just because it would be interesting. <laughs> just why, like you'd have to like evolve in a completely different way, you know? Mm. There would be like there would just be one long handrail going around the entire world or something. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh you'd probably do like a lot more stuff like auditorily and by yeah. now people would probably go to echolocation schools or something so you can learn how to like click properly. Have yeah, you seen like people you that wouldn't... do that? Oh, really? No, I've yeah, never seen there, that. Yeah, there's a couple like blind people that can, I don't know if it's super common, but I know of at least a few that can echolocate and like ride a bike and stuff. What? Like down, down a street, yeah. What? Mm -hmm. that's crazy you need to look this up yeah no way yeah but just yeah, by I'll doing like a little clicking later. sound with their mouth wow mm -hmm. that's insane so oh it's like gosh. yeah so there would be like ways to adapt to even being blind i think and being able to kind of sense the world and what's weird is actually when they were some of the studies they've done with that when they do that clicking it actually activates the same part of the visual cortex as like somebody seeing something no way so there might be like even some sort of because your brain's not seeing like the world it's all, all it's doing is interpreting energy and signals yeah so if you're getting and it's building kind of the map inside your head or what you see so if you're you know clicking like you might just be building your own visual map inside that same part of your brain you know wow but who knows i mean who knows it's like impossible to really see inside someone else's head but it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, hmm. yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, so that's the one I would pick because I think humans are kind of like creative enough and mm -hmm. like have enough ingenuity to really overcome some of those hurdles in like probably really interesting ways. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you could invent a new sense. <laughs> What would you try to invent? What would sense be of like morality. a sense of morality? <laughs> no, I don't uh, know. I think that's already kind of exists in a conscience, but um, 
you could if you could sense something else it's almost on the verge of like superpower you know yeah like you can yeah because like being able to even sense radiation would be interesting or something mm -hmm. but um I think like something to allow people to empathize better, like sense somebody else's like a super empathy or something where you can like sense somebody's motives maybe mm. or like sense their intention would be kind of cool mm. like, with more accuracy than just having to like learn, I guess. Cause mm. like when you, you know, see something, it's obvious when you feel something, it's obvious when you hear something, it's obvious, but like there's a lot of interpersonal stuff that's not obvious. <laughs> Mm. so maybe something to like amplify that mm. um, yeah because even with like sensing it's weird that uh, Krista was telling me something the other day where it's like you can't even um, like certain I think fro or lizards have like sensors for feeling wet and like people, ac people actually don't have like a way to feel like water or moisture like you can mm. feel the pressure on your skin, you can feel like the coolness, but like you don't actually know if something's wet or not, which is like why mm. you can feel like a, a cool, cooler sheet or something and it you know feels damp sometimes mm. or whatnot because it's like almost mimicking the feelings of dampness. Mm. So it's like, you know, even that where it's... And so basically you can sense things or you can figure things out even without sensing them just by inferring like different things based on your senses, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. And that so would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah See, so, so like with the interpersonal stuff, it's like you can't maybe necessarily even sense in that direct, I would want to have it be in a direct way, but it's like, you can't sense it in a direct way, but you can kind of infer from, you know, like tone of voice or seeing someone's like body language or, um, you know, hearing the, you know, maybe even, you know, smelling like a, a pheromone or something that indicates, you know, like how they are. What is it? Anatomically? Is that right? No, physio physiologically. Physiologically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so the even smell might be involved there or something. So you can kind of infer all these things about people and how they're like are, but you can't actually sense it. That's, mm. that's why I would choose that. Yeah. What about you? I think it would be interesting if we had more direct sensation to the inside of our body. Hmm. Cause it's like, even though, you know, I think it's, I think it's a good thing that we don't sense like everything inside of our bodies, <laughs> you know, like I don't always want to sense like, the poop moving through my large intestine. Like I don't need to Your really be beating. consciously aware of that. Yeah. My heart beating, like I can feel my heart beating on my body, you know, but, but I, I feel like it would be interesting if we could, if we could sense more of what's going on there. We just like the, the sensory neurons that we have go to our autonomic nervous system. They don't really go to like our conscious mind as much, mm -hmm. but it would be interesting if we could sense our internal structure a lot more and be like, Oh, that's, I can tell that my kidney, like my left kidney <laughs> feels weird because I can like sense the fluid moving through the left kidney, you know, or, mm. or like if you could sense your blood content, like, oh, I can sense that I have like a little bit low red blood cells right now. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think that that would be interesting if you had more conscious uh, sensation of your internal environment. I feel like that would yeah. be really interesting. And that's weird that it's so different than the external as well because like if you had like a bee sting on your hand or something or it was swollen it's like you would notice that like <laughs> in an instant you know like right. it wouldn't even take a second to realize that and you'd be like "Ooh, my hand feels like slightly larger than it was yesterday or swollen or whatever <laughs> but if it's like your you know liver is rotting out with cancer it's like you might not catch that for months yeah <laughs> like yeah which is so weird <laughs> I know, huh. you know, yeah, you're totally right in terms of like the cancer issues or like, oh, I've got plaque inside of this one part of my artery right now. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I can feel that I've like grown this muscle bigger and I can like feel the, you know, or, oh, this bone isn't getting as dense. Oh, I've got osteoporosis in this bone. I don't know. Like there's so much stuff that if we could just consciously feel it, sure, I think it would be like a curse in the sense that 
your mind would be overwhelmed with all these sensations <laughs> that are constantly moving and changing inside of you. And it's like, Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to feel all these things. I don't want to feel these feelings. But, um, <laughs> but you know, it's like it, you could potentially fix certain problems too, or be aware of them. And yeah, know, maybe, maybe that would be a bad thing. Cause you'd be stressed about them all the time. <laughs> like maybe ignorance is bliss. Well, it's like weird then that even like on the, the external side, you would feel that much either. Like, like, why do you feel that much there? You know, is it cause less stuff happens there or is it, you know, it's like, it seems like, I don't know. There's a lot to like, if you're not going to be alerted to serious things happening on the inside necessarily, and maybe there's an argument that they are, but people ignore it, but it's true. Um, you know, you, you would think that you wouldn't be alerted or you'd be just as alerted or you would expect some alert, some balance of alertness between the internal and the external, you know, it's like, yeah. Like how can you notice like a tiny little cut on your, you know, paper cut or splinter, but like you could literally have, you know, cancer again or some, some serious internal issue or like you said, or you said plaque in your arteries or something and not notice it, you know? Yeah. It's like, that, that seems like a real, real weird balance there. Yeah. I know there's like all kinds of internal threats that we're just totally oblivious to. And yeah. it would be interesting if we could sense those things internally more. I think that yeah. would be an interesting. Do you think that's possible sense. and people just don't dive in enough? Or is it like, is it maybe by like ignoring it, you dry, like kind of lessen those signals? I think that there are some things that it, you, if you have good training, you could detect things like in your heart rate or, you could try to feel things with your breathing. You could try to be observant of like your your digestive gurgling and oh, how bloated do I feel right now? How much internal pressure do I feel like I have in my stomach? I Like I think that there are some things that if you really trained yourself on and really tried to quiet yourself and focus and like feel and think about it and record it and you could maybe pick up a few little things. But mm -hmm. I don't know if you could pick up stuff like plaque i don't know if you could pick up stuff like cancer maybe you could pick up something like i'm not just my you know i've got indigestion right now i feel bloated i feel like i have to burp i feel you know i don't like it's it's hard to pick up some of those more subtle things like the specifics within that yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know if you could pick up like little details you know you might not be able to train yourself for that have yeah. you ever heard of like the monks that can like like isolate certain parts of their body and like make them freezing cold and stuff. You ever heard about that? Yeah. I've heard a little bit about people who can use their conscious mind to change the temperature of the yeah. parts of their body. Yeah. Where they'll like have two, they'll put both their hands up and they'll do like an infrared, uh, you know, scan of the hands and show the temperature and mm -hmm. they'll be able to take one hand and like try to draw the blood out of it and make it like colder than the other hand. Yeah, and I don't. I don't know how they do that. Yeah, that's a pretty crazy <laughs> thing. I know. Yeah, maybe there's like some internal squeezing of the blood vessels or something. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. So like that's kind of like a an awareness or an attention that like you would probably have to train to get there. But yeah, yeah, maybe they're just aware of all the metachlorians around them, and so they've been <laughs> able to, to use use the force. <laughs> Uh, oh. that's the real awareness to have that's the <laughs> but actually uh, like a spiritual awareness would be cool yeah like if you could have like a sensor for that like mm -hmm. understanding how like all that's flowing through reality i guess that's probably what i'd pick actually yeah change my answer <laughs> yeah opening your your fourth eye yeah yeah the one on the like, back of your head or, or maybe like a quantum physics sensor where you can like oh string theory happening or something i don't know oh, that would be interesting <laughs> yeah yeah like what if you could actually visually see the individual like atoms you know, mm -hmm. at the molecular level like what if our eyes could be like a microscope looking into something <laughs> that would be crazy wouldn't it yeah, yeah. speaking of overwhelming information yeah <laughs> just be like ah. yeah <laughs> Probably i like, mean yeah i i mean i also think about how many sounds there are that we just can't hear that are happening around us. You know, the, the high pitch sounds that like only dogs can hear, 
you know, and I just wonder, man, I want, there's probably all kinds of weird sounds out there that just go outside the spectrum of what I can actually listen to. And they just go through the air right past me. I don't even know that that sound is happening, you know? Yeah. Or different What's interesting is like most of these senses are like all energy related, you know? So it's, Mm -hmm. it's just different forms of energy being translated by your, you know, by your, your body, body. Yeah, I guess. Or whatever the, sensing instrument is but yeah because you know it's like with the sound like the sound is just the energy and the the sight is just the energy and just like a different form you know but it all kind of stems from the same place and so it's like a lot of it is just your own interpretation of like those energies and stuff so yeah i don't know it is interesting seeing like Yeah, because like hearing different frequencies and stuff, it would be, it'd be really like super trippy because you would, well, again, you'd probably be overwhelmed because <laughs> yeah. it's like hearing so much. It's like there's a lot of frequencies I wish I could tune out, but, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, being able to hear more and then, I'm not, I'm not sure the point I'm trying to make, but yeah, it's just like. Yeah. I don't know. It, there's I guess at the core of it maybe is what I'm trying to say is like it's you're like really just boiling down to like information, I guess. Mm-hmm. And like translating information that's kind of like flowing all around us at all times. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I think the other thing that's interesting with senses is how we control them, you know? Like right now I've got my headphones on. You know, I just want to listen to your voice and there could be like noises happening around me, but I wouldn't really know that those were happening. You know, they would be like subdued because I've got these headphones on or Mm -hmm. we change, you know, when we go to sleep at night, we close our eyes. Okay. I'm shutting off this sensation. Um, you know, there's, there's so many things that like, Oh, I'm going to plug my nose and you know, whatever it is, (laughs) it's like, we have ways of kind of controlling our senses and sometimes doling them, trying to heighten them, trying to do different things to them. And I think that that's another really interesting thing is the control mechanisms that we have around them. Um, do you feel like there's any benefit to shutting off your senses? Like if right now you could just no sight, no sound, smell, taste, touch, you, you know, just temporary, just for like 30 seconds Who or something like that. I know it's like what what do you how do you think that would make you feel would you like freak out would you be like oh this is relaxing would it be meditative what what do you feel like that would do for people when they shut those things off mm. I don't know that you can like or no, yeah, just hypothetically, if you could. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not possible, but like, like I don't know that you can. With I think it's like tied to consciousness in some way. Hmm. I, or because um, there's actually like it was kind of interesting. We went, went to this cave, yeah, the St. Louis Cave in Montana, or uh, not St. Louis, uh, Lewis and Clark Caverns in Montana, and. Uh, you know, they turn the lights off in there at one point in the cave to like kind of like give you a, a, you know, a little snippet of true darkness. And like, it's just, you know, obviously there's no light anywhere. And the, the guide's kind of telling you about, you know, that after I think it's, it's not very long. It's like 30 hours or something in pitch black. Like you actually start to like lose eyesight because your body's like, well, we don't need the eyes anymore. No way. And then, really? Yeah. Wow. And like you'll go like permanently blind after a week of just no being in darkness. Way. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So your body like starts adapting super fast. And like also, you know, you just basically go insane. Wow. Um because you like you need the stimulation from the eyes basically. Well, like well, okay, but I don't think it's just the sight that's gone, but like once all your senses, like so sensory deprivation actually, Mm -hmm. this is kind of where I was getting to, but like with sensory deprivation even is like when you actually start to go like crazy 
and you just basically go insane if you don't have any stimulus because your body is set up that way so like i wonder how much like outside stimulation and senses like keep us sane i guess or like Mm. you know because if you're insane it's like is your consciousness like what is your consciousness really relying on you know it's like you're you might not have much of an experience a sane experience if you don't have senses i guess is what i'm trying to get at oh and so like to turn off all those senses like you i mean for a second it might be fine i don't know but if i imagine if you did it like too long it would like warp your whole whatever you are i guess yeah that would be like traumatic to your brain yeah it's crazy and Mm. it's like you know you might not necessarily think you're your brain so it's like at that point it's something different but it's like the fact that it can have that much of an impact on your physical body would be like weird to me Mm. so i wouldn't do it for very long if i could (laughs) yeah yeah have you ever been in a sensory deprivation tank no i've never done that before Mm. no but you know i was thinking about how it is interesting when you do something like go swimming and you're underwater your senses Mm. change like you can't see things as well you can't really hear stuff very well you can't like smell maybe you could taste a little bit like taste of the salt water or whatever the flavor of the water is but <laughs> you know i feel like you're mostly lake, <laughs> mm, <clears throat> lake water yummy <laughs> mm, geese geese poop water um but yeah <laughs> i much. feel like you could you know you're just stimulated mostly by touch because like every part of you is being touched by the water and you're feeling the temperature of the water and the movement of the water but almost all of your other senses are kind of removed a little bit you know, you can, you can kind of, you can hear stuff, but not like clearly, like there's a lot of noise stimulation in your ear, but you don't really know how to interpret it very well. Yeah. And so I feel like that's a really interesting sensory experience is going underwater. I feel like it's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Nice. I think from there we should just dive into my topic. Oh, go for it, man. <clears throat> if, if I'm not cutting you off. No, that's okay. Cause I was just gonna, I, I think it's confirmed at this point. We got to talk about whales. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Speaking so it's, of, of going underwater and listening to things. Yeah, because it's all, I mean, and, and sensory stuff and, you know, whales clicking underwater and making these crazy mm. sounds. Okay. Because um, I feel like it's just basically what we're talking about now. We might as well just throw this in the mix. Talk to but, me about um, whales, man. <laughs> yeah, and no, I've just been watching a lot of whale videos. Um. But yeah, it's it's crazy because, you know, like with their sonar and stuff, like, you know, they're, they've got access to this crazy sense that, you know, people don't really, I mean, as we talked about, I guess they kind of possess a little bit of it or can, but being able to kind of like click, it's insane. They can actually hear them, each other from like, like almost hundreds of miles away. Wow. And that's like how well, you know, being underwater like the sound transmits and vibrates through and stuff. Wow. And so, yeah, it's kind of just, and they're starting to, like a lot of scientists are starting to kind of put together, you know, like their language and their, their habits and stuff, but they're hard to study. And so, mm-hmm. but a lot of, it's just crazy how much of their, their life cycle and stuff is occupied with, you know, like you were saying, the sensory stuff where they're really, you know, communicative and, um, you know, it's like their hunting is revolves around sensing their, you know, communication obviously revolves around sensing and their, you know, basically ability to not only project a sense, like with that echolocation, you know, you're putting out a vibration and then you're seeing what comes back. So it's not just like having a sense, but it's also like making a sense in the world of that you know, that makes sense. Is that what you're going to say? I didn't want to, (laughs) (laughs) you know, but yeah, so it's like, it's a sense you can actually, so like most senses seem passive, right? Where it's like, you're seeing, you're just taking in, you know, light. If you're hearing, you're just taking in sound, but with something like echolocation, you're actually like pushing or putting, you know, a force out into the world to get something back. It's kind of like an interesting thing. Mm. And so that's interesting. Yeah. Have you ever uh, swam with a whale or done any whale watching or anything? 
I just whale watching. Never, never been in the ocean with a whale. Yeah, um, that'd freak me out, dude. I know that would freak me. Out. I've seen those videos of people, you know, scuba diving or snorkeling or and stuff, and then a whale comes up out of the water and like <laughs> eats a bunch of fish or something, and they're all freaking out because they're right next to it. Like, so there's a bunch of cursing. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like I watch those videos and it's like oh, it's giving me nightmares like now I never want to go back in the ocean again uh, <laughs> yeah yeah, dude what's nuts is like so the people these people driving with like sperm whales and stuff um, they're the loudest animal on the planet really and mm-hmm and they'll literally like uh, so when like people are diving with them and if like the whales are super talkative like the bodies of the divers will actually heat up because their organs will be vibrating so much. No way. <laughs> yeah. So you can only do it for a limited what? amount of time when they're like talking what? to each other. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> just what? Like the That's energy insane. and like your, your, the friction in your body like just heats you up and starts boiling you. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's like a really interesting strategy. Like sperm whales, like I wonder if sperm whales just start vibrating around other creatures to fry them. They do. They do use their like clicks to like stun stun things, and there's wow. like you know, because it is like so loud. So I mm. think I'm trying to remember what the exact decibel level was, but they like basically are. I think they're around 250, like can go up to like 250, 250 decibels, and then like your eardrums blow out like at around 150, oh, and wow. then. Like 110 is like a loud jet or rock concert. And like wow. 60 is about normal speaking voice from what I understand. Like they don't always do their loudest stuff. And like when people are around there seem to be more like curious and docile and don't like try to destroy up from the them. inside out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like they could, they could, you know, they could easily just with like the sound they make, like destroy you, <laughs> which is kind of wow. weird. That's a yeah. weird, crazy thing to think about, man. Yeah. So you watch like these interviews with these divers and they're just like, well, I'm glad I didn't die today or like have my eardrums blown out. Like the whales were good to me. <laughs> it's like, wow. that seems really risky. I don't know. Just like one of them gets scared or something and makes a noise or like a really loud noise. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. And they're like, you know, starting to figure out the language of these whales and like how they, you know, how much information can be encoded in just like clicks and you know it's almost like a morris code or or mm. some sort of you know as with any language it's you know different in codes and frequency or frequencies and pitches you know mean different things but mm -hmm. you know to like on the casual listening it just sounds like maybe just a, a standard clicking sound but it's actually mm -hmm. like super complex and mm. stuff so Man. if you had the chance to dive with a whale would you I think I would, yeah. Yeah. Or, or at least I'd like to think that I would. Maybe if, if I was in the moment and it was like, okay, it's down there, <laughs> go jump in. I'd be like, ah! <laughs> right? <laughs> Which way is, is its mouth facing? <laughs> Where is it exactly? I don't know if I want to anymore. You can't I miss know. it. It's the, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, because dude, something like a blue whale being like 100 feet. Yeah. Like, what? It'd just swallow you and it wouldn't even know. <laughs> it'd, it'd just <laughs> like, it's right? It's like, Oh, like it's so huge. Like yeah. you've got, and the other thing is that if you're hanging out with a whale that big, you've got to mm -hmm. be really deep in the ocean. I mean, mm -hmm. chances are you're probably not finding that very often close yeah. to shore. So you've got yeah. to be really deep out there, which is also a freaky thing. Like, oh, how deep am I in the ocean right now? It's a little creepy. Yeah. And so that's a whole nother component too. Looking straight down and into like, the hmm. abyss. Yeah. Like there's a that bottom somewhere. I don't know <laughs> where though. I'm not good. Leviathan I sleeps. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to go down there and find out. Yeah. Well, that's like, dude, I mean, 100 feet is so long. It's like a school bus being alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like super weird. Uh, and, yeah. I, know. I mean, yeah, you I think could... about dinosaurs and it's like, well, we still got whales. Like those things are huge, you know? I think they're. Bigger than I think it's the biggest blue whales are the biggest yeah, things blue to whales live. Are the biggest thing, yeah, yeah. It's even bigger than dinosaurs, which yeah, it's like you can't really put it into perspective unless you 
like actually got up close to it, I think. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like even, I don't know, have you seen an elk or a moose up here yet? Moose, just moose. Okay. Uh, maybe a couple elk. Yeah, mostly yeah. moose though. So you see, a, you see a moose and it's like huge, right? It's like yeah. kind of intimidating. Yeah. Like, you know, and that's only what, 10, 12 feet tall. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, you're like, I wouldn't want that thing running at me. And it's like only three times the size of me. <laughs> it's like yeah. something that's 80 times the size of me. And I'm in its, in its habitat, the water, and can't really move very well. It's like, oof. it's crazy how for like a long time people were doing whaling, you know, they were mm. hunting whales. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I get how I get why you'd want to hunt whale for the blubber and the meat, and you know, there's all these resources in the whale and everything, and it's valuable. But it's like, how, how on earth you just got to shoot out harpoons and like drag that thing up there on your ship? Like, how the heck are you killing a whale, man? That things, <laughs> I, I yeah. just like kind of blows me away thinking about that. Yeah, it's like such a monster of a creature to be hunting after. Mm -hmm. yeah i was actually kind of listening to something today about whale hunting where they were saying like just based off ancient account or not ancient a couple hundred years ago um back in the day uh that uh after i think it was like 10 years of whale like extensive whale hunting when it like really started to kick off like whale capture rates like dropped by 50 percent or like successful whale harpooning dropped by like 50% um, because I, they don't know exactly why. And some people assume the whales are like communicating better strategies to get away or something, but, um, or maybe there was just less whales. I don't know, but it seems like they were able to evade capture more effectively. Yeah. And I mean, so. they could have migrated to just other <clears throat> parts. I mean, that's the, yeah. that's a creature that could, go pretty much anywhere at once in the ocean too you know yeah i mean they can endure a lot of cold weather and so yeah. they could go all over the place where humans wouldn't really be able to endure certain places yeah. as well you know yeah. yeah so yeah they're kind of like weird weird animals yeah just especially like they're just like a log <laughs> if you really think about it <laughs> it's like a log of fat <laughs> Just kind of like <laughs> flops around in the water. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just a giant fat blob <laughs> yeah. with like little paddles sticking out, <laughs> and just a giant yeah. open mouth that like slowly opens and closes. And <laughs> yeah, they're not like. I mean, somehow they're majestic, uh. but like not when you describe them. Yeah, <laughs> like covered in barnacles and like gross stuff, and I don't know. <laughs> kind of leathery and weird yeah that's true i think that we sort of <laughs> like culturally you know we idealize them in cartoons and <laughs> save the whale stickers and people's like depictions of them but yeah, yeah i don't know i don't know if they're really that amazed like, <laughs> like i don't not not touching that thing i don't want to swim in the water with it it could <laughs> blow me up with its sound clicking yeah, like, I don't know if it's quite as majestic as people would think if they like big whale close. dong hanging out. Like <laughs> no one wants to see that <laughs> whale dong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So it's like, like they're cool, but they're not. I don't know. How do whales mate? I mean, how do they do that? They have Who like knows, a man, like like two like subway a, sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I don't think fish do it the same way as land creatures do, you know? Yeah, but they're like, mammals. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're mammals, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, fish uh, just like lay the eggs and then... And then they like spray fertilizer it, but... over, or, over the eggs or something weird like that. Yeah. But they're... But yeah, whales are... What do whales do? Yeah, I think they're all... Yeah, get busy. Dang. So... That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, how, do you know how long do whales live? Do you I think know? A pretty long time. You think they live like 50 years or longer? I think at least, yeah. You think, yeah? You think they live longer? I know, longer? like with the yeah. sperm whales, the the babies will spend like even up to like 13 years nursing. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. 
I think that's like the extreme end of it, but it is a long mm. time. Mm. If only there was what, a way to figure out. What do you think? Uh, what do you think our world would be like if we didn't have whales? How do you think that would change things? Like, good question. Probably would, the same. You know, like it would. Would it ruin the the ecosystem in the ocean somehow? You know, like a lot of people talk about how oh, we really need bees. Bees are essential. What about whales? Or how essential are those? Mm-hmm. You know, everybody wants to save the whales, but why? What do they do for us? <laughs> you know, it's like we're not getting whale honey or whatever. <laughs> you know, whale yeah. wax, something. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of like people are always like, ah, eh, species are going extinct. And it's like, well, we're still here. No, <laughs> save the species, <laughs> don't kill the things. But, um, you know, it's like, yeah, at what point do you, yeah, like how many species do you need? Are there some that are more important than others? Yeah, like I don't know if we truly need mosquitoes. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. If If we did not have mosquitoes on planet Earth, I feel like that would potentially be a good thing. Yeah. I don't know. Just, I think mosquitoes are actually pollinators. Really? You think? Are I they? believe so. Yeah. Uh, pollinators. It's like only the female blood. mosquitoes that suck blood. Oh, that's interesting. No. Yeah, it says uh, typical lifespan is seventy years for a sperm whale. Oh wow, seventy years! That's like yeah. a human yeah. in whale form. So it's <laughs> basically of. just wall e, except in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. 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 Then they go, then they dive down and. Fight giant squids. Oh yeah, that's right. They do do yeah. that, don't they? They got like all the scars on their face and stuff from doing Dude, that. That would be crazy watching like a sperm whale squid <laughs> epic ocean battle. Yeah, be like a yeah, Godzilla like watching, thing. Yeah, I was watching something about how they even get down to that depth, you know, because they're like kind of buoyant, you know, so they shouldn't be able to like dive that well. But basically, they have a bunch of oil in their forehead Whoa. that there's like speculation that so basically what happens when they dive is that the oil starts to like freeze and condense oh. and so it almost acts as like a diving weight in their in their nose and forehead that like pulls them oh. face first down into the what if you what if you just got stuck down there then what if they went i think they just use their tail to they just use up, their but, tail yeah okay all right it's not like it's down, so it's heavy e- that it's easier it, yeah yeah and then their lungs start collapsing um whoa um, because it's like so deep and so their oh. ribs are actually like specially designed to like fold in <laughs> on what? their collapsing lungs what? So they're not carrying all this like air in their lungs so there's like Whoa. less gas transfer and so then they use a bunch of like uh hemoglobin stored in their blood for like air and Whoa. so they have like 10 times like per amount the hemoglobins is humans i think Whoa. and so yeah so they just basically store a bunch of the air in their blood not their lungs so what I'm hearing is that next time I go do a triathlon, I'm gonna I'm gonna juice up on some sperm <laughs> whale blood so I can get Maybe, all that dude. extra hemoglobin. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, then they go down and eat squid and do whatever they do down there. I guess <laughs> hang out. <laughs> yeah, they go but, down there to look at the lights, you know, the pretty fish. Yeah, so maybe. <laughs> Yeah, go. And then you can echolocate, so you're fine. You don't need the... Yeah, you don't talk need about getting rid stuff. of senses, you know? Yeah. It's like there's no light down there. Yeah. Weird. And But if there was one sea creature you could s- swim with, which one would it be? Uh, that I could swim with? Cuttlefish? Uh, I don't know. I mean... There's definitely some cool sea creatures out there, but I'd also be like freaked out if I saw them, <laughs> you know, like if I saw a giant sea squid down there Oof. and I was down there with it and it's like, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> don't eat me. I just want to look, um, that would be yeah. cool. You know, I, I would also probably faint from, from nerves, but yeah, uh, I don't know. Probably like a giant manta ray, stingray oh, things. You I was know, say that'd the same probably thing. be cool. Yeah, I know. Yeah, those would probably be cool to see. Those, be yeah, majestic. Right, that's like basically an alien. Yeah, basically like a the birds of the sea. Yeah, the ocean. Like if you saw something like that flying around Mars, you wouldn't be surprised. 
Yeah. You're like, yeah, that belongs here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. It is uh, weird how how many creatures <clears throat> under the ocean look like they come out of a sci fi movie. Mm-hmm. You know. Or maybe sci fi movies just make them based off <laughs> the ocean. Oh, uh, newest avatar movie. But yeah, there's there's so much stuff down there that's like that just seems like space aliens <laughs> that are down in the ocean. Right? Yeah, everything's like slimy and weird and like... just like aliens would be. Aliens are obviously <laughs> just... slimy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean humans are kind of slimy. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'd like sweaty mucus yeah. when you're sick, you you know, sinuses anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I I think if I had the oppor- opportunity to go diving with a whale, I would. But mm. yeah, it, it's weird that they have like, because it's, it's really hard. Like you said, you know, you have to be out in the open ocean a lot of times and it's actually hard, like, it's actually really hard to like find them and like interact with them and stuff and have them want to interact with you even. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, because it's like, if you jump in the water with a some, an animal that doesn't want to be with you, it's just going to like swim way faster than you can keep up with it. Yeah. So, like they have to want to be with you to like actually have an experience with, you know, like a sea creature for the most part. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Like I would, I'd be like pretty interested in that. And I think seeing a narwhal would be weird. Oh yeah. That would actually be really crazy to see a narwhal. That's interesting yeah. to think about. Like a little unicorn of the sea. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's basically a magical sea creature. Yeah. Yeah. You know. When like even some of the smaller stuff can be like really gnarly. Like have you ever seen like a leopard seal? No. No, I've never seen a leopard seal. If you ever want nightmares? Oh, just go really? Look up like a attacking oh. leopard seal. Okay, I won't look that up. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times they're like in the Arctic. They just like, eat rip penguins apart and stuff. But uh. Oh man. Yeah, they're like super gnarly. Okay, just I have like, an important question for you about whales. Yeah. Do you think that Jonah was swallowed by a whale or a big fish? Mm, I don't know. I'd have to look into the text again to see what it actually what, is. But What kind of sea creature do you think would swallow Jonah? Probably whichever a, kind God told a, to. A, <laughs> but, a uh, whale? Uh, yeah, I don't whale. know. It'd probably have to be like some bigger whale just to not... Like get what, digested instantly. I, guess. I know. Like what? What whale is the most accom- has the most accommodating internal environment to like survive a couple days in? You know. Yeah, it's not going to be like Pinocchio, where it's a big cavern in there. And yeah, just like and he's got, got like a, a lamp or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I guess you'd be like because you'd just be in like intestines and digestive juices. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Like, I mean, are you just hanging out inside of its mouth or are you like inside of its stomach actually? And you had to like go through the esophagus. Like if you're in its the... mouth, you'd probably just drown, right? Uh, like, yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know how much water. I mean, if you went into the stomach, you would start getting digested, digested, you know, there would, there mm-hmm. would be like acidity in that. And so I think you would start melting. You know, yeah. your skin would start getting destroyed. But if you were just in the mouth, maybe, I don't know, maybe if they didn't like swallow in water, then mm. you'd be okay. But yeah, if the, I mean, then the whale would have to just like not eat for a couple days. Yeah. You know, because if it opened its mouth, then it would let all the water in. Like maybe yeah. it could open its mouth, let the water in, and then like blow, ho- blow nose. What is it? Blow <laughs> hole? <laughs> God's the... way of waterboarding you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to go to Nineveh? All right, you're going to get waterboarded by a whale for three days. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a weird one either way. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, I don't know, like, because I know a lot of whales, especially like the baleen whales, they just like literally just eat by keeping their mouth open and swimming. Oh, just, really? Like, oh. Collect krill, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, which is weird that like, you know, some of the biggest creatures on Earth live off like things you can't even really see. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> tiny, tiny little things. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like, that's a weird dynamic in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Like the biggest thing eats the smallest thing in the ocean. Yeah. <clears throat> so. I mean, it's almost like us eating rice, you know? <laughs> Or like quinoa or something. I mean, if you have enough of it, then it makes a whole big pot of quinoa. Yeah. You know? And you just, if you get a spoon, you just spoon it in and eat it. Yeah, which is weird that krill is smaller than rice even though. It's like, Mm -hmm. like I don't even think a bunch of rice would be a good meal for a whale. Mm. (laughs) But yeah, if you just keep your mouth open all day and just filter out the ocean, I guess. It's kind of weird, but Mm. works. Huh. Yeah. Weird, weird creatures. Mm. Strange, yeah. strange whaling creatures. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> monsters of the sea. Did you ever go to the Natural History Museum in Santa Barbara and yeah. go to the where they had like the big blue whale skeleton? Yeah. That was always crazy. That was cool. I know. Yeah, you could walk through the uh, skeleton like it was. <laughs> in its body yeah i think that was from a younger blue whale too it wasn't even like an older one. Oh, really i think so yeah, yeah. so yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know like kind of one of my aspirations in life is to be some sort of ocean diver yeah yeah i don't know how to make it work but an aspiration I, I mean i have you ever been scuba diving i love scuba i haven't diving. no yeah i should probably do that first before I i've uh say that's my aspiration I've, I've talked to emily about how if i could just do whatever and not worry about any responsibilities or anything in life i would i would try to go work on like a, a marine dive boat where you just mm. go in the caribbean and you just go on dives and take people out on dives to like wrecks and cool stuff i mean that would be so fun to just go swim in the ocean every day. Hmm. Yeah. Get a little salty after a while, probably. Yeah. Just be a salty yeah. dog. <laughs> it would be cool, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that could be a retirement job if people haven't destroyed the oceans by then. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, should we wrap it up there? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Well, all right, all right people. Fun, fun times. Use your senses and uh go swim with whales <laughs> if that makes sense to you if that makes sense to you <laughs> you know or just watch finding nemo again yeah yeah that's probably as close as i'll get to being a deep sea diver unfortunately <laughs> we'll see all right oh, shoot. oh dropping his head dropping his uh microphone on the ground Technical difficulties. But, oh, yep. Right, right at the it end. It was the whales. The whales did it. <laughs> it's always the whales. Yeah. All right. They Thanks use it their, again their sonar. Episode 13. That's right. And we'll uh, see you in the next one. Stay Have inspired, people.